Hi, I'm Luke Filson, and welcome to Cameron's Cryptic Classroom. On today's show, he's talking about the Wood Devils. So here he is, Cameron. What is happening, y'all? <laughs> and thanks for clicking back on here again. Uh, again, big ups to Lil Fizzy for jumping in. We had something else planned. The weather didn't really work out. We were we were going to have like a fire and all kinds of stuff going on. Didn't work out this time. So we'll do it again as soon as we got the winds, right? First it's cold, then it's nice, then it's the winds. It's a crazy, crazy time. But again, thanks for being here. We're going to knock this bad boy out of what we're going to talk to today is, if you probably saw the, the title, Wood Devils. Uh, this is something deep down inside that I guess could be any and everywhere. Why it's only in New Hampshire, I have no idea. And for those of you that are uninformed and you want to know just what the hell a wood devil is, here it is. For the basic part, we're talking about a six foot tall creature. Six foot, hell, seven foot rather. Seven foot tall creature that sounds like a hairy version of Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, they're thin. They are known to hide beside or behind trees. There's a lot of animals that do the tree peeking, right? I mean, we know about Bigfoot doing them. What is there some more? What do they call them? Hide behinds, I believe, is another one of the name of the animals. There's several animals that are like this. What's funny is you get some reports of hair on these animals, or on these creatures, rather, and you get some reports that it's not, that it's more of a stick figure wooden, like almost like a thinner version of Groot, if you will, like a big mantis Without the insect head, right? Just its arms and all this. But these things are very, very sneaky. That's why I say there's a really good chance that they're out there. They're all all around us. Might be things that are responsible for whatever. Or, or some have alluded to that this could be another offshoot species of the Sasquatch just in the New Hampshire area up in that part of the world. A lot like the skunk ape, you know, is different in Florida. We have three-toed tracks here in Texas things that we've gone across. Get a load of this. Some have seen them upwards of nine foot, right? Nine footers. Now this started from what I can tell back in the 1930s, Coos County in New Hampshire. Uh, there are a few uh, tales of them from back then. There's some here, a lot of different reports, but they all still report a lot of very thin and very skittish behavior. Not so much an aggression, not so much like paralleling or trying to keep up with what you're doing, but it's almost like they are secretly following you when they know you're there. And when people notice them, that's when they split. There are several stories that were told uh, by loggers back in the 1930s when this stuff kind of started getting popular, gaining a little familiarity to other people. They may have been the loggers in these areas and, and the pioneers in these areas might have been the only non or the first rather non-natives to ever witness this. Uh, it is clear that they report that the hair on a wood devil is long. They have longer hair. Odd, I know. Uh, you jump back to 2000. You go way back to 2000 and there is a fella named Evan. Boy, I'm not going to get this right. Lichnowski. He and his wife were walking and up doing a little backpack hiking, I'm assuming, maybe even overnight camping, uh, along Drummer Pond Trail in Coos County. And at this little intersection area, this is where they say, the husband reports, the wife saw it as well, that crossed in road in front of them was this creature. And he said the thing that caught him the most was that it was freakishly tall. It was not something that you would go, oh, that's a deer, oh, that's a bear. This thing is like, what the hell is that? Freakishly tall, very thin. He said the stride on this thing was a large stride, way larger than a human being. Here's something. It was covered in gray fur, and it had a pointed head, conical-shaped, if you will, like the cone heads, right? We've heard reports of those, too, from other animals, especially on the Bigfoot side of things. Now, if you jump forward to 2004, November 15th, 2004, a fella took his grandpa hunting. So they decide they're going to go out to one of their favorite spots, sit out there together. They get out there, and no sooner did they get set down, they hear a squealing sound, an awful high-pitched wailing squeal. 
Now, apparently, from what I've read, this is indicative with wood devil sounds, that where you hear these sounds is where you find wood devils and have wood devil encounters. They believe it is a warning, like squirrels chatter. They believe that this sound is what the wood devil releases to let the other wood devils in the area know what's up, right? So we're like, eh, all right. They're not thinking anything of it. They hear this sound. They're like, wait. And it, it, it's it's not for sure or for certain if they knew what it was and the squealing alarmed them or they didn't really know. But what is for certain is on the trail that they worked around, they came in contact with one. They said they rounded a big pile of brush and there this thing was standing there. They said, now it was like nothing they had ever seen before. Not the grandson, not the grandpa. They both agreed it had to be close to, if not dead on seven foot. They're like, man, there is nothing. Of course, you you got to imagine, we're used to seeing, quick side note, I have a cousin, I've talked about him on the show, uh, plays college football. He's six foot seven, 318 pounds, right? When I see him, you can't help but be like, good Lord. Now, I'm trying to think of something bigger than him. Not maybe weight-wise, but tall-wise. But then when you get into these Bigfoot sightings, you're talking 7-foot, 400-pounders. And I think, how would you know that size? You know, I always think of that. How would you know what you're gauging on? Well, using him. As big as he is, he's still normal. He's still, I'm used. you know, you're used to seeing people that size. Maybe not every culture, maybe not every country. But you're used to seeing large human beings. I think when you hit that seven-foot mark, it's stunning when you see it. It's something that really catches you off guard. You're not really prepared for it. So it might be something that instantly your mind's like, yeah, that's over six foot. Even six and a half foot, you're like, that's tall. But you know seven foot. We've all seen seven-foot tall uh, athletes. You can look them up online, see what they look like. They legitly stand out. So I think that's one of those things when people say, look, it was at least seven foot or dead on. It may have been 6'11". It might have been 7'3". Either way, you're pretty doggone close because it's huge, right? This thing's huge. It's ridiculous. So the the grandson was telling the story, said he and his grandpa encountered this thing. It was It made a squealing sound. It let out the noise they were looking for and took off like a bolt. So luckily for us, I guess, for this story. And for them, it left tracks. So they go get tape measures and come back to measure the tracks that it left. Now, they said they find the footprints and they, you get conflicting stories here. Some of the footprints are reported being just as big as a Bigfoot track, 15 inches. But the difference is instead of the wide pad, it's a more narrow foot. They don't really cover that in this story. Or rather, you get both. You know, some are like it had a you know a, a distinct foot, just like Bigfoot, or others are like it's just big, but not like Bigfoots. These tracks were 15 inches long, heel to toe, and the stride was around five to six feet. So whatever this thing was is stepping a long distance, which makes you think long legs before you get to the big hips and you work your way out. So I'm assuming a seven footer would probably have a pretty good stride like that. So. They pack up and take off, right? After they take the measurements. I couldn't find any pictures. I couldn't find anything else of it. But they take the measurements of these wood devils and split. Now, these are a few of the stories. You can look up other stories about it. There's been a lot of talk about them with hunters seeing them where they would only see from, like, the chest up because they do the tree peeking, right? We're we're looking around things, right? We hear the tree peeking stories all the time with Bigfoot. So it does kind of lead you to believe that these may be an offshoot. These may just be a separate species of Bigfoot. I don't know how they would adapt only in New Hampshire and why only in New Hampshire. That's rather odd. Uh, And if they aren't, if they are like a mixed species, well, then what did the Bigfoot breed with to make these long, tall, thin, wood devil, wispy looking creatures? We don't know. And that's part of the mystery. And that's what makes the cryptid classroom fun. And thank you so much for joining and clicking and punching buttons and all that. I really appreciate y'all being here. Sorry for the gap. Like I explained last time, it was madness. I'm going to try to have this coming out more. And in fact, I think I've got Big Fizzy talked into doing some stuff. I think I'm fixing to get him to hop on. Not this time, but coming up soon. He has some things that he's about to do. And then we have 
a surprise coming up. I'll tell you next week. I'll know more about it next week. I'll tell you next week how the surprise is going to go. So stick around. Little Fizzy's got something else he wants to tell y'all. Thank you so much for being part of this. Love you guys. Have a safe whatever the rest of your week is. And I will catch y'all next week. Peace, y'all. I hope you enjoyed this episode. So like, subscribe, and hit the bell for all our videos and share to people. Thanks for watching.